how do you do? My name is Alfred Hitchcock, and I would like to tell you about my forthcoming lecture. It is about the birds and their age-long relationship with man. It will be seen in theatres like this across the country. In my lecture, I hope to make you all aware of our good friends, the birds. Theirs is a noble history, and through it all, man has played a conspicuous part. This cave drawing is one of man's earliest sketches of his feathered friend. One can see at once the loving care with which the artist depicted his subject. The story of man and his friends, the birds, is filled with many fine examples of ways in which these noble creatures have added to the beauty of the world. Take this plumed hat from the period of Charles I. How proud the birds must have been to have their feathers plucked out to brighten man's drab life. Here we have a later model a refinement of the first. Here man, or rather woman, thought enough of the birds to have an entire one as a decoration. It's quite dead, of course. Naturally, the egg plays a very prominent part in my lecture. Not a word about which came first, however. I don't believe in dealing with controversial matters. Thousands of years ago, man was satisfied merely to steal an egg from a nest and use it for food. Now he has perfected this process by imprisoning each hen in a separate cage and by scientifically manipulating the lights so that she doesn't fall into the rut of the old 24-hour day. Thus, he can induce the bird to reach fantastic heights of egg production. Originally, there were many varieties of birds on Earth. Some have become extinct. The great auk, the passenger pigeon, and the famous dodo bird have all disappeared. Actually, they didn't exactly disappear. They were simply killed off, but of course, this is nature's way. Man merely hurries the process along whenever he can be of help. Man and birds have been responsible for a great many advances in our civilization. For example, the bird was the inspiration for the invention of gunpowder, and it was his speed that brought about the development of the shotgun. But man has not been unmindful of his debt to the bird. We have honored our feathered friends in many ways. We cage birds and show them off proudly in most of our zoos. And the turkey is traditionally our guest of honor at Thanksgiving. I suspect you never realize that if it weren't for birds, even some of our pastimes would suffer noticeably. Duck hunting, for example. Granted, bagging a fellow hunter can be diverting, but the supply is rather limited. I hope you don't mind if I have something to eat, but I'm rushed today. Planning the lecture has been most educational for me. I've begun to feel very close to the birds and have developed a real sympathy for our little... What was I saying? Oh yes, I've come to feel very close to the birds and I've come to realize how they feel when... I don't think I'll eat just now. Hardly proper with all of you here. Surely the birds appreciate all we've done for them. Don't you? Beautiful cage, fresh water, no other birds to bother you, none of that blinding sunlight. Oh! Now why would he do that? Most peculiar. What on earth?
Hello, welcome to Movie Umpers. My name is Bob Sham. Hello, I am Angela. Sounds like you're maybe dogs. You gave me a trim up, so I'm letting the dome out today. I like it. I like, I'm feeling clean. You look great. Feeling, feeling, got that, uh, what do the kids call it? I think a clean, I don't know. <laughs> they don't say fleek anymore. Once I learned what that meant, it died. Right, right. N- now I'm like, what is rizzing? What is rizzing? Hold on. Oh. Another term's about to die. Hold on. I heard this recently. Rizzing definition. I got this. Let's see. Riz. Riz. Short for uh, charisma. Oh, yeah. You got the riz. I got a good amount of riz. Yeah, you do. And now that word's not cool anymore. Uh, We are nearing the end. We're on our last two Women in Crisis films. (sighs) I'm going to miss this month. Tippi Hedren all bloodied. That's right. Her screen debut. I think you can guess what it is, maybe, if you're up on your Hitchcock. It ain't Marnie. Mm -mm. Marnie was not the debut. But this movie, I have a memory of watching this movie in, you know, at some point in grade school, middle or high school. There is some scary spots in this movie. This is ostensibly a horror movie. but, uh, But, yeah, I watched this in school. And that part where the little girls on the ground getting pecked on the back of their head, we collectively laughed at that part. I don't, I'm not going to miss this month because women have been in crisis, but we've seen some really excellent movies and it's about w- at least half of them do feel like horror or noir or psychological they're very darker. thrillers. Yeah. And I dig that, of course. Maybe that's where women belong. In crisis, you know, they're just so good at it. We got to leave them there. (laughs) Yeah, we're talking about The Birds from 1963, directed by Alfred Hitchcock, starring the on-screen debut of Tippi Hedren, or at least the feature film debut, also starring Rod Taylor, Jessica Tandy, and Suzanne Plachette. Also starring Alfred Hitchcock and I think his two dogs. And two dogs at the very beginning, based on a novel written by Daphne du Maurier. The birds. So the woman in crisis here is uh, Tippi Hedren's character, Melanie. Melanie Daniels. And uh, it takes a while to get up to the crisis. She's apparently a, um, a somewhat of a celebrity. She's like the daughter of some a newspaper magnate. I think she's a socialite. I think she's like a Paris Hilton. They talk about her being in the papers from having been in. In a fountain in Rome or some shit, but no one ever says what her job is. It seems like they have these little backstories and these this this movie's strange. Like it's not a bad movie, but it's but it's fucking weird. Like mm-hmm. it almost doesn't matter what she was, and yet it kind of does. And this movie is almost like a generic love story that's just interrupted by murdering birds i actually had that thought multiple times i felt like i really got to know these people and i think that's it's it's actually really clever because it tells you so much about all of them even the school teacher in the little town yeah. you learn so much about these people how his the mother is a widow like all this stuff and truly at one point i was like when the bird's going to make this go down? You know what I'm saying? Like, it starts, but it's a slow burn. Yeah, nothing really seems to matter. It's just all about the birds. Unless there was going to be some reveal, unfortunately there's not, that Tippi Hedren's, um, maybe her late mother was a bird or something She's like a witch, that. I think. There is a woman who supposes... Or proposes that it's her, that it's Tippi Hedren's fault. Because oh. it didn't happen until she showed up. With the lovebirds. Tippi Hedren... Is not just, you know, in danger of birds. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was also had a very con- strange relationship with her director, Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, yes. The, the crises really ramped up when she was filming Marnie, her, their second movie they did together. And she backed out of working with him after that, but he had her under contract. So he kind of buried her. I forgot about that. We forgot about that a while a ago. A couple of years. Mm hmm. Alfred Hitchcock, he discovered her, and I think he fetishized her quite a bit. And he, it was like he wanted his own little actress doll. Mm -hmm. The many he worked with before had too many ties 
Uh, but, but Tippy was very new to the business when he brought her up and she does a fine job, but like he, it was like he wanted to have his own little, uh, actress doll. But at the same time, as we've talked about before, he seems to hate women. So he's not going to be nice to his little actress doll. He's going to push her and maybe even mistreat her. Yeah, and and you can call it like method style in which he's making her uncomfortable to contribute to the scene. Lots of directors have been known to do that Mm -hmm. to some degree or another. Uh, Apparently, uh, near the end, the sexual harassment got ramped up too. Mm -hmm. Like he straight up told her that he wanted her sexually and all this, but... But he would kind of isolate her as well. He didn't want anyone to talk to her that wasn't automatically in scenes with her. And if the scenes were, uh, if there were paused on the scenes and no one was supposed to talk to her, I can imagine that for yeah. a young and naive Tippy Hedren, the mother of Melanie Griffith mm-hmm. and grandmother of Dakota Johnson, not knowing that much about the industry at that level at that time, that it maybe seemed a little Maybe fascinating, like, oh, I guess this is just how he is. Their relationship just kind of spiraled into a very strange nightmare that she had to kind of get out of. And and no doubt, Alfred was just a fucking weirdo when it came to Tippi Hedren, mm-hmm. just ultimately. So there's kind of a woman in crisis on screen dealing with these goddamn birds. And uh, we're getting a slow, we're slow burning into a crisis behind the scenes as well. Yeah. So that's kind of why I picked this one. Um, Because... Uh, You know, Tippy, eventually she would move on from that contract and do a few more films here and there. Never as prolific as this one. Mm -hmm. But she's also in that movie Roar with the tigers. Which I need to watch because I've never seen. And it's, uh, and so from one killer animals movie to another. (laughs) So Tippy goes into a pet store. We always just say the names of the uh, actors, but it's Melanie. Melanie. And Rod Taylor shows up while the store person is running around. She's actually trying to buy a macaw for her aunt. Oh, right. A and mina. This is mina bird. That's why it's not bird. a macaw. Mina she never bird. gets that mina bird. No, but she was going to give it away as a present. And this man comes in and he wants Rod the Taylor. lovebirds. Yeah. And he kind of... We find out later that he recognizes who she is because she is a socialite, and he actually saw her in in court once. We find out he's a lawyer, but he kind of fucks with her because he pretends as though he thinks she works in the pet store and starts asking her all these questions, and she doesn't fucking know the answers, but she gives answers. Yeah. And then he says it's because he wanted to prank her because he knows that she enjoys pranks. Oh, you thought you were pranking me? I'm pranking you. Yeah, and so I guess... When he saw her in court, it's because she was in trouble for, she hit someone with a car, but it was part of a prank. This so is, then he pranked her by acting like she worked at a store. You know, in the movie, in Alfred Hitchcock's movie, um, Vertigo, mm. shit's like, did you just fucking bust? I love that movie. Okay. In <laughs> Alfred Hitchcock's movie, Vertigo. Uh, it's convoluted as fuck, but it does get somewhere and it's strange as shit, but it somehow works yes. when it all comes together, but it's never not weird. Mm-hmm. I don't know if all the small details work as well in the birds. I mean, ultimately where it's going is a simple place and it pulls off that simple thing, but we get all this backstory and it's really like, who cares? Mm-hmm. Truly. It's convoluted, but... It doesn't seem to, like, matter or mean anything. Well, you know, because then, you know, she turns around and tries to prank him back by ordering these lovebirds. And she finds out where he goes on the weekend. And she travels way out of her way, like, hours away to this little small town that he lives in. And everyone's like, why are you here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because his mom and sister live there. But truly... No one can understand why she even came. Obviously, she was charmed by him, but she's pranking him. And she leaves these birds. But you're right. It's almost as if, you know, as we get to know these characters in the town, as she's going around asking questions about him, and there's, like, the man in the post office, and there's the man who rents her the boat to sneak across, and there's the school teacher that she finds out the little girl's name from, and all of this. It's like Hitchcock wants to set up sort of that quaint little town where we care about everyone 
you know, or you're seeing like a slice of life so that when it all gets destroyed, you feel somehow connected, but it doesn't really accomplish that. It's like a weird, like, RPG mission this lady's <laughs> going through. Yes, it is. She arrives in this weird little bayside <laughs> town, and they're like, all right, if you want to get over there, you're going to need a boat. But the road is close. Like, there'll be some reason why they, she has to go to the, the, through the boat and she'll be like, but you uh, have to get the girl's name first. Yes. How are you going to get on the boat if you don't have the woman's name? You got to go talk to the woman and then you got to go over here and then you got to go eat a plate of fried clams over here. <laughs> and, uh, and then go to the <laughs> convenience store and buy a, Granny nightgown because you have to stay the night when you didn't plan to. Uh oh, it's raining. It's wet outside. Looks like <laughs> you got to stay in. But she does. She takes this boat out after meeting um the lady who ends up being an ex of the Rod Taylor character, Annie. Annie, as she's played by Suzanne Plachette. Mm-hmm. She's hotter than the lead, yep. but the lead has more of a personality because poor Annie, she's she's a hottie. But she's like, I came to this town and I got friend zoned, but I figured I'd just stay in this town. And for I'm the best man. friends with his mommy. And I'm best friends with his mom. And she teaches the school, but she's cool, but she's really not cool. It's like back then, if you didn't get that one man you wanted, then you were the lady in the alternate universe she, and it's a wonderful life. She's truly an old school mom. <laughs> yeah, literally. She truly is. She just doesn't wear glasses, which might have been helpful in this Yeah, movie. super old. She's like 30. <laughs> Jesus. The boat thing is so dumb because she doesn't want to just drive up to the house because she doesn't want anyone to see her coming. So, oh, I don't know. A woman on a motorized boat coming straight across the lake at your house mm. is not going to be noticeable? I guess not. If you're Except not. he saw her. Well, it takes him a minute. He only sees her after she goes inside. Yeah, she went and in drops. their house. Yeah, she opens the door and like leaves it with a note. And she sees him walking around looking, and at first he does look towards the road or driveway. That's true. And then the lake is the only place to look. And, and he gets his binoculars out. And, yeah, and then it becomes like, ah, oh, you came all the way out here. Yeah. And now you have to have dinner with us. That's right. The mo- My mother's not going to like you for most of the movie. Did she like, did the mother like Annie? Yes. Not when they, they were got, dating. No, no. But she after. hated her when they were dating, but when they were not going to be in a relationship, they became best friends. So yeah, Annie tells Melanie at some point that really it's just that his mother doesn't want to be abandoned. Her husband died about four years ago and Annie came to town four years ago. It was like mm-hmm. right after the dad had passed. She was the girl he brought home and mom was like, no. And apparently this is the next girl he's brought home. So he has just been doing for his mom and sister for four years and maybe fucking people in the city. I think a great um, little, you know, you can kind of fantasy fanfic this movie a little bit, make up reasons. Maybe uh, the mother character, as played by Jessica Tandy, is controlling the birds to keep her uh, son from truly being happy in relationships. I don't buy that one. And she killed Annie when Annie, when she realized that Annie told her where they lived. Come on, just go with it. Okay. So the birds start coming around. And the shots are great. Like, the the way the suspense is built and how the birds are gradually starting to accumulate. First, it's just one bird. And they attack um the kid's birthday party. And that's when we get the bird, like, plucking at the... Oh, yeah. Uh, she gets hit in the face with a seagull. Yeah. And seagulls will kind of go for it, but usually you got to be eating something. But uh, but it's not that unusual, right? But she is just on a boat in the middle of the lake, and it just fucking slams into her head and cuts her. And so, obviously, he's taking care of her. But, yeah, she stays the night so that she can go to the kids' party the next day. Yeah, because they're all friends now. And, yeah, that party gets ransacked by seagulls and and it is kind of funny and the little girl loves the lovebirds it's like the best thing ever it's the lovebirds isn't it it's got to be the lovebirds the only thing that contra- where did they order the lovebirds from that's what ha- where it came from the only thing that contradicts i think it is the lovebirds but i think the only thing that kind of contradicts the lovebirds specifically is that in when they're closed up in the diner 
the old the sea captain's like, ah, oh, gulls were attacking me a week ago on my fishing boat. Mm-hmm. That's the thing that kind of contradicts it, but everything seems to be happening once these lovebirds are around. And we hear later on the radio that there are a few other isolated incidents, but it's all around on this, this town. one town. And, you know, she brings the lovebirds in. They're not birds that are supposed to be there. Yeah. The lovebirds shouldn't be there. This beautiful woman from the city shouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. This is for old, tired marms and widows. Absolutely. And dusty, barnacled-ass boat bo- boat boys. Yep. People and their chickens. Oh, the chickens are acting weird. The chickens won't eat. Mm. So it's not just one kind of bird. That's what's kind of amazing is it's all the birds except the love birds. I wanted to see like 20 chickens kill someone. I wanted to see chicken. We didn't even see the chickens. They just talked about them. We do see a guy with his eyes pecked out. That's, that's pretty when we gruesome. know. That's when they know something major is happening. But still no one believes them because they, the cops are like, y'all are crazy. Somebody must have snuck in and killed him and gouged his eyes out. The birds came in after. They also attack the house that uh, Melanie is staying at, Rod's mom's house, Mm. Mitch's mom's house. Before that, they attack the school. and, And for some stupid reason, instead of boarding up the windows, Melanie and Annie decide to run all the children out into the street. The birds also go through the chimney when they're holed up in the house. So there's that issue. And Right. And they're, they are using actual birds. It's, it's a lot of crows and seagulls and smaller finches and shit. But they're doing this thing where it appears to be like a green screen kind of thing. Like there are actual birds, but then there's like an effect to make it look like there's more like layered in it. the frame than there really is. It actually looks really cool. Yeah, it looks good. It's pretty peak technique at the time. for the time, yeah. Sure. But it's the birds. The birds are fucking everyone up. There's a point where the funniest part of the movie, other than the girl getting the back of her head pecked, is um, they're in the restaurant and they're looking outside and there's a guy pumping gas, right? Mm. We're getting into the climax of peak bird horror. This is after we've found dead bodies and shit. This guy's pumping gas and this seagull comes down, hits him in the face and knocks him the fuck out. And then there's like a lot streams, like flows of gas going through the street. And of course, there's a guy lighting a cigar. And then we watch him catch on fire. And then the whole town just becomes an apocalyptic nightmare from this incident. The detail, Melanie and the other people inside the diner looking out the window trying to warn that man. It was actually a muffled sound. I loved it so much that the microphone was outside. Look at the gas. That man's lighting a cigar. Hey, you! Get out! Get out! Don't drop that man! Get out of there! Get out of there! Mr. Ron! Watch out! Look out! Look out! Watch out! But you never see shit like that. You would have just heard them, I feel like, normally. It was great. This sound comes off so fucking... I mean, I'm sure it would hurt if a seagull flew into your fucking face. I get it. But this sound like come this this town comes off as unbelievably soft. <laughs> yes, they're you know I know like you said we're getting towards the climax and they they go back to the house after this they start a fire in the chimney so the birds can't come back in again and there is there is another big attack but mm. they're okay. Well then everybody's like kind of sleeping, kind of resting, whatever. And, you know, the man is a little busted up because a bird did get through a window and he had to, like, close the window. But they're safe. Mm -hmm. Well, Melanie is a dumb bitch. And she walks up the stairs because she hears a bird. And she opens a door and the entire attic is full of birds. Or it's this whole room because there's been, like, a hole busted in the ceiling. Yeah. And instead of 
just closing the door and getting back in the hallway. For some reason, she ends up in the room with the door closed behind her. <laughs> and these birds are just, like, coming at her and at her until she, like, passes out. But here's the thing. And we talked about this. Unless a bird gets you in the jugular <laughs> or literally gouges out your eyeballs mm. or gets you right in the temple. I don't know. There's some places, right? It could really do some damage. But if birds are just pecking at you, that fucking hurts. Yeah. No doubt. Maybe the birds, they just decided, you know, we want to fuck up some humans. And they did an independent study. What is the pussiest ass town on the West Coast? Mm-hmm. And maybe they attack her first because she's not even from that town. She's Bodega like a Bay. Stupid city girl. Yeah, you're going to fuck this up. You're, you might be. A little tougher than these people. She's not. This is when she loses her mind. Mm -hmm. Because she's never quite right after this. She's like in a daze. I think. uh, She's, you know. I think uh, film meets reality there. Apparently near the end of this movie, they were just reshooting her, that attic part, and just throwing actual birds at her. Oh my God. Like over and over and over again. I think she uh, was not um, into birds very much. As you can imagine, after this yeah. movie, getting birds thrown at them. And like a, a people on production, from what I've heard, maybe said some things like, yeah, you might like end up actually hurting her if you don't chill out. But he didn't. Alfred, you fucking Humpty Dumpty weirdo, stop. Mm-hmm. Stop it. Oh, the school teacher's dead. She gets pecked to death. And they end up... Um, the do- they they get the daughter to their place again and yeah that's when we get the that's attic before, scene uh, yeah that's yeah so they have they have to go get the car and it's a very patient scene and it works like to get all this together and they're getting all their ducks in order to drive away and and the birds have calm periods there's birds everywhere still mm-hmm. but they're not attacking right now they seem to be chill so long as you walk very slow they were like snipping at him mm-hmm. but as long as he didn't react and they managed to get the family into the car very slowly and the movie ends on them driving off and apparently there was a supposed to be an extended ending where it kind of draws out a little more where they roll through town and they see a bunch of the dead de- the devastation and the dead as they go through the town which actually would have been really cool it would have been cool and a part where they were supposed to Peck through the 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 fabric of the convertible Convert, top, yeah. but we didn't get that part. They still would have escaped. Yes, but that's the birds. God, but I think the birds brought uh, Mitch and Melanie together. They're definitely they're definitely going to get married in like three days after this. Oh, right? for sure. And the mother loves her. The mother by the end is cradling Melanie. She's comforting her. Yes. But why the birds? It's like a a villain story that we don't get any resolution for. The mother in this, Jessica Tandy, right, Mm -hmm. is also a little off. Yeah. From the beginning, when she she finds the first dead man that we see with the eyes plucked out and loses her shit. And there's a point at which she keeps repeating herself talking to Melanie about like, do you think the little girl's okay? I feel... She's at school. There's a bunch of windows, which is why Melanie goes to the school to get the little girl. And that's Mm -hmm. when all that shit goes down. But she's like so distracted. But she actually opens up to Melanie. Yeah. And talks about the fact that her husband died. And at some point she even says, I think I'm just afraid of being alone. Where I thought, I thought you were going to go real dark and weird earlier when you were talking about the mother. Because, you know, the mom doesn't want him to be with anyone else. And he oh, constantly yeah. calls her darling and dear. A little more Oedipal. It's a little. He's now the man of the house. Yeah. That happens. His father passed away when he was a grown man. So it's not as though he, like, kind of grew up in that space. And he does, like, come home on the weekends. And obviously he takes care of everything for them. Mm-hmm. So it's like he's taken up that role. I don't think anything happens has ever happened between them but there is a little more familiarity and like a weird it was weird to me how many pet names he had for he's his a mom. mother boy he's a mama's boy mother boy oh mother, mother, boy? mother boy mother boy yeah it's like that show i think it was a tlc show about uh people who are very too involved in their mothers mm. so they're trying to date mm-hmm. 
The Birds. The Birds. It's a it's a fine movie. I don't know if um this is of course was a big hit, as you can imagine. I mean, there was nothing like this at the time. Oh course. yeah. So I mean Alfred Hitchcock is kind of the the foundation for the a lot of the horror thriller kind of movies. Maybe not so much like well, Psycho was kind of the proto slasher, right? So this is um uh, this is a little bit along those lines as well. But the birds, why the I I I'm on the bird side. I just want to say that. If there's any question. I just I get it. The birds see this town, they're like these guys suck. Mhm. Look, I'll fly into this dude pumping gas. Knock him the fuck out. Watch this dumbass over here lighting cigars every 3 seconds. You know they're going to burn each other up. Like this town went through birdemic and an apocalypse what about the little old lady in the diner who's an ornithological scientist or something oh, and yeah. she's like throwing out bird facts like there's eight million such and such varieties of birds in the united states and 10 billion something something in the world and birds can't do what you're saying birds do well so much for your education i kind of wanted a more variety of birds like a pelican like beating someone up some vultures or some I shit. I wanted the lovebirds to do something. I wanted they the lovebirds to talk, them. like start just speaking like a devil's language. Mm. Maybe the birds are opening up a, a gate to hell in this Bodega Bay. Hard to say. We don't get answers. and But we, we get answers to character backgrounds that really don't really mean much to us. Mm-mm. But it is kind of fun watching these birds fuck people up. Let's uh, let's wrap this up. You're going to get one through five. I'm going to get one through five. Combined for best out of ten. For the birds from 1963, mm-hmm. give it a 3.5. It, it is still entertaining. It, it sounds like I'm kind of ragging it. No, it but is. But it is entertaining. It is entertaining. I'm going to give it a 3.25. Cool. So that's a 6.75. All right. Take a look at the 6.75. It... Uh, Shares the rankings with the with uh, Ali Abbasi's Border, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and Hotel Transylvania. Okay. The, the Birds by Alfred Hitchcock is at least as good as, if not better. Than Hotel Transylvania. Than Hotel Transylvania. <laughs> the Birds, Mr. Hitchcock. <laughs> Check the show notes for links and other places to find us. <laughs> Like, subscribe, leave a comment, correction. Uh, what's your favorite Hitchcock film? Do you have any fan theories about the birds, what they were doing, why they were doing what they were doing? Angela didn't like that the mother was secretly controlling them. It kind of falls apart at the end, but S- some psychic controlling. Maybe there was a villain controlling the birds that just wasn't revealed the whole time. You know, that, oh, that stalking Melanie. Stalks Melanie. And Melanie. She, he sees that Melanie's crushing on dudes. He's like, I'm going to use my machine finally to get these just birds trying to, get to just her destroy to this leave. fucking town. I'm going to remake this one. This one needs to be remade. I was working on this whole theory that, you know, the first thing the little girl asks is, are they a man and a woman bird? And I think they're gay birds. It's like two <laughs> male birds. And they don't like being taken into this provincial town in this christian woman's household and so they're blowing it up or she uh melanie goes they're non-binary <laughs> woker you are woker you are all right <laughs> go ahead watch your back girl <laughs>